And in fact, the Harvard Business Review uh, had an article uh, uh, covering this about about optimism in people. Well, optimism is a good thing. If you go back a uh, hundred years or something, and uh, and you tried to uh, uh, grow your crops or whatever, and and the crop, the crop failure, trying again was was important. Or if you're fishing, you know, sitting there and saying, "Well, you get a fish in a minute," is important. And optimism is important as well in uh, software and systems development. Unfortunately. Uh, too much optimism can cause huge problems where people think they can do things that have never been done before or all the mistakes that they know have happened in the past in their experience won't happen this time. And uh, the way to deal with this, this built-in innate optimism of people is to temper it with an outside view. Now, viable estimation is a tempering method as well as collecting uh, uh, metrics from prior, prior systems, for example, productivity and schedule and cost. Uh, and I'm not suggesting we move optimism because optimism is an important thing. You know, being in the in the software business, I many of you know that that you spend half your time doing the work and half your time finding out how you messed it up. And so we need to be optimistic, or we'd all jump off a bridge somewhere. But the the key is to be uh, not to remove optimism, but to balance optimism and realism, so that so that plans are actually achievable. Um, Things that are challenging and achievable are highly motivating to people. Things that are unachievable are, are extremely demotivating to people, as well as causing problems uh, throughout the organization. Here's an example of tempering, and this is out of a book called How to Measure Anything. It's uh, one of my favorite books these days. It's by uh, Hubbard, and I highly recommend this book, How to Measure Anything. In any case, if you go back to World War II, in June of 1940, um, the uh, there were the German Mark V tanks were causing all kinds of difficulties to the Allies. <clears throat> and so their um, intelligence people did an estimate of how many of these tanks were around. And they estimated a thousand tanks. And statistically, this is early use of statistics to, to, uh, estimate these kinds of things. The statistical estimate was 169 tanks. After the worst and captured documents, there were actually 122. So we can see the, the, the the estimate actually did a much better job of tempering the, uh, the manual estimate. <clears throat> in, in 1941, uh, intelligence software 1550, statistics at 244, actual was 271. And at the end of the war, uh, intelligence thought there were still 1,550 of these tanks. And uh, uh, statistically, there were 327, and the actual was 342. Now, what's my point here? One could say uh, an entire number of tanks isn't optimistic but pessimistic. The point is to tempering by having a second method of looking at what people people uh, think of their of, 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 by themselves can be critical to helping people do a better job of, of estimating. And really, the most important task in a project is setting realistic expectations, but we need to do that at times when we have the least information. Uh, and unfortunately, many estimates are completely inaccurate because uh, because people haven't done a, uh, enough of, enough of a job of, of producing an estimate that's that's viable. Now, in my definition, an estimate is the most knowledgeable statement you can make at a particular point in time regarding the effort, cost, the schedule, the staffing, the risks, and the reliability. Now, this is an important point. <clears throat> that a well-formed estimate is a probability distribution. That means that uh, it might be a million dollars in 12 months, uh, most likely, and it might be an 80% probability. It won't exceed uh, 15 months in a million point three or, or whatever. But having a single point estimate without quantifying uh, what the probability is, what the, you know, where, where do we expect this is coming in, is, is, is one of the big things that cause projects to fail. I was just uh, a few weeks ago visiting a customer with with a uh, open process, and one of the areas that they found that they, they were just giving a single number for an estimate. Now, I recognize that going in with a range, your stakeholders probably aren't going to want to hear that. It could be 1 to 1.3 million. I also recognize that going in with an estimate of 1.3 million at, uh, as a budget and then a plan that at the, at the fifth probability or, or 1.0 million, as I, as I, in my example, can give extreme power in uh, in producing successful projects. Some people say this is a cop out. Why can't you Why can't you give me a number and I just meet it? Well, um, other interesting things I've seen is an organization that always met their estimates every time. And in fact, upon investigation, they had overestimated everything. You know, the the developers had estimate, and then somebody had a layer, and somebody else had to add the layer, somebody else had to add the layer, and they ended up with so much. Uh, 
uh, budget that they couldn't spend it all. Well, that wasn't uh, wasn't really uh, very good for the company either. In fact, if you never, ever, ever have a project overrun, then you may be overestimating. Now, perhaps you're just really good at managing it or using Agile and you're building the right level of functionality or whatever, but never having an overrun uh, is uh, sometimes a sign of, of of organizations that are not quite together with their estimating as well. Uh, seen another case not long ago where a uh, large company was using an outsourced supplier, and as long as the outsourced supplier produced a little bit more productivity this year than last, they were they were completely happy. Well, all the outsourced supplier had to do was overestimate the first time, and then and then do a little better, a little better, a little better. And while they weren't really necessarily doing anything better in the organization, uh, they had the appearance of 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 improvement. So again, the point here is to estimate not just what we think it is, but what's the best case, what's the worst case, and then a, a, a probability range. You can do this manually, or you can do it with uh, with tools. Estimation is critical for all kinds of systems. Uh, um, you know, people usually don't go forward unless they have some idea of, of, of the cost. Unfortunately, estimation isn't always made a uh, isn't always made a uh, key process. You know, how many, I can't tell you how many times I've seen the estimate being nothing more than asking a subject matter expert who gave a, a an opinion and probably a reasonable opinion, but it wasn't repeatable. If you ask them the next uh, week or month, you might get a different estimate. And many people won't spend the time. I, you know, sometimes people tell me <laughs> that uh, they don't have time to do the estimates because they have to get the work done. Well, you know, it's saying that we don't have time to estimate and plan because we have to get the work done is probably a, a uh, core indicator of a project that's going to be in trouble later. And some people have to say, well, what is the definition of success? Yeah. If I get a project done and it, uh, it's 400% of the budget and it's 300% uh, of the schedule, but it's completed, is that success? You know, some people would say yes. I, I would say no. Um, it depends. If it's a critical project in your organization and you've got to have it, whatever it costs, and you start down the, down the road perhaps with an estimate that isn't good and you you got to keep going, well, then you had to keep going. But in most cases, a an estimate should be used in a business value analysis, and being off by 300% uh, uh, would be a disaster. And everyone es estimates, and we estimate every day. Well, how much time do you have to leave uh, your house to work? Uh, you know, where should you go for lunch? How long is it going to be able to get done in an hour? We're constantly getting uh, different things. It's just we often get it wrong, and we don't have a pro if we don't have a process. Even when we do have a process, things that can, that can go wrong, the optimism or the, the uh, misscoping, et cetera. So repeatable estimation process, I, I believe, is critical for estimating and for success projects. Some people right now might be saying, well, we're using, using Agile, so we need to do that. Well, not true either. Your stakeholders still need a, an estimate of cost and schedule and, and risk. Even if uh, if it's a natural, I mean, not very many stakeholders are going to say, "Okay, just let me know when you're done, and we'll be happy." Estimation and measurement go hand in hand. A part of the estimation process it should be measuring what's happened in the past, and that should be fed into uh, systems for the future. Look, I think at the business and business criteria of projects, and, and that's from CAS software. If you up the table on the, on the right. On uh, the x-axis, the effectivity. How much? How much? How effective is this going to be? The value of IT, you know, low to high. On the y-axis, how mo is effective is this going to be to the business and business value? And by looking at it in this way, you know that some projects should be canceled even if they're underway because they're not going to generate proper business value. You know, others should be considered only if they'll, you know, depending on the amount of profits, 